Um, well, I was the largest investor in Russia with three billion pounds invested in the country. Um, I complained about corruption. Um, they expelled me from the country. They raided my offices. Um, they expropriated my investment companies, stole $230 million of taxes that we paid. A young lawyer named Sergei Magnitsky uh, stood in the way and tried to stop this whole corruption scheme. He was arrested, tortured for one year, and killed at the age of 37. Um, it's a, a terrible, terrible place to do business. The uh, authorities' version of events, specifically uh, on the raiding of your offices, is that they essentially w were after you because they suspected that there was some kind of tax fraud going on. So they would say they had legitimate reasons. Right. Well, so the, um, what they did was they, they raided the office. They used a, a tax offense as a pretext to raid the offices. And then, um, but in, instead of ha having, um, going after us for taxes, they went and stole the $230 million of taxes that we paid. We were one of the largest taxpayers in the country. And so, um, and then when my lawyer testified against the officers for using the documents seized during the raid to steal the taxes, the same officers then arrested him, put him in prison, and killed him. And it's not just me saying this. The president of Russia has his own special human rights commission that did a full investigation and came to the same conclusions. And your company, Hermitage Capital, is no longer operating in, in Russia at all, that's well, right? it would be uh, insane to, to yeah. do business in a country like that if they're killing you and trying to steal but your money. What, what would you say to, to all of those people? I mean, David Cameron has a large business delegation with him, lawyers, all, all kinds of different businesses. What would you say to those people who are very excited by the opportunities they see in Russia? Well, if you look at the, at the list of who's, on, who's actually going with him, you have a number of law firms that are just business, interested in getting legal work. You have a few oil companies that have to be there anyways and then a few people from trade associations and maybe one or two others. Um, these are not people who, um, you know, either they are, they're already in and they're just trying to um, make nice with the Russians um, or they're lawyers trying to get business. But I, you know, I would say to, to anybody who's considering investing in Russia, don't take any comfort that, by the fact that the Prime Minister is, is uh, jawboning about what a great country it is. It's well, not. But, but you did very well, didn't you, out of your investments in, in Russia? Um, we made lots of money, but I wouldn't call four, it very... Four billion dollars worth of investments, is that right? We had four billion dollars worth of investment, four and a half billion. Um, but I wouldn't say that it, it, how, you can't describe doing well if a lawyer working for you has been No, I meant, arrested. Pure, I meant purely on the financial side of things because you were talking about but, investments. Yeah, but you can't look at, I mean, if someone gets killed because you're doing business in that country, you can't look at it just from the financial side. You have to look at it o overall. It's, it's never, it's infinitely, um, uh, it's an infinite loss if somebody is, is, is taken hostage and tortured and killed uh, over a one-year period.